So this is number one, and uh, we're given that 3x plus 6 equals k over 4 times the quantity x plus 2, and we're told that that's true for all values of x. Um, if it's true for all values of x, then it's definitely equal for uh, true for x equals 2. So that'll give us um, just 12 equals k over 4 times 4, which means k equals 12, which means the answer is d. So one of the things you want to look out for are um, statements, like it's true for all x, or, uh, you know, if they're saying that it's greater than zero or less than zero, you got to watch out for that, especially if you're going to use this uh, kind of plugging in type of technique. Um, let's take a look at number two. So in number two, we're actually told a lot of stuff, but primarily we're told that c is equal to 5 over 9 times the quantity f minus 32, and that k is equal to c plus 273. And then a quick look at the answer choices tells us that we're trying to get k in terms of f. So what I'll do is solve the second equation for c, um, so C is equal to K minus 273. Then I'm going to go to the top equation, C equals blah, 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 and replace that C with K minus 273. So I get this. And then uh, looking at the answer choices, you don't need to simplify this very much. You just need to move that 273 over. So we get this. Um, and looking, that's option D. Uh, there's actually another way to do this. So if um, F was equal to 32, then C would be equal to 0 and k would be equal to 273. Then if you look at the answer choices, um, you can actually eliminate a bunch of them right away because uh, k is definitely not 273 in a, b, or e if we make those substitutions. Um, and then for c and d, you get 273 and negative 273, but since we want positive 273, we would go with the option c. Um, let's take a look at the next problem. So this is number three. And we're given two ordered pairs, and we're just asked to find the slope between them. So this question is uh, hopefully easy if you're taking the math too. Um, so it's going to be 5 minus 11 over negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 6 over negative 5, or 6 over 5, which is 1.2, or D. Um, a good idea, though, is probably to graph this thing, or plot them really quickly. Um, and doing that, you can find those two measures. Uh, and also, that really tells you that it's positive right away. Uh, not that any of the answer choices were negative, but uh, it's still good to know. And let's take a look at number four, which I'm going to do by hand, but really the ideal way to do it would be on your calculator. Um, so we're given these three equations, and we're asked for the value of y. So what I'm going to do is number these, just to make it easier to talk about. I'm going to do 3 minus 1, which gives me uh, just z equals 8 when I subtract those, because the x and the y cancel, and then 10 minus 2 is 8. Then I'm going to do... Uh, number 2 there and replace the z with 8, so y plus 8 equals 5, and I will get uh, y is negative 3. But really the better way to do that would just be to use your calculator. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump over number 5 because that's 100% a calculator question, and I'm going to do uh, number 6. So looking at number 6, we have a cube. And this is one of those one, two, three. So option one is you can get a square, two is a parallelogram, three is a triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is think about it, and I know right away, if I go um, through the, you can obviously get a square, right? Like every, everybody knows that you can get a square by cutting this cube with a plane. Um, so if you can get a square, that means that you can rule out any option uh, that doesn't include number one. So that is 2 and 3, or B and C, rather. Those are gone. We also know that a square is a parallelogram, which means that option 1 uh, implies that option 2 is true. Um, so since option 2 is also true, then A can't be right, because that was 1 only, um, and D can't be right, because it doesn't include 2, so the answer must be E. Um, number 7 is purely calculator. Number 8 is also a calculator. Number 9 is also a calculator, so I'm going to jump to number 10 here. So number 10. Uh, we're told that f of x is equal to uh, this, and then we are asked, well, then we're given f of g of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write f of g of x like this. 2g of x minus 1 over g of x plus 1. And then the question is, what's g of x? Um, well, by observation, if you just look at the problem in the book, you'll see that g of x must be equal to square root of x squared plus 1, which is option B. 
Okay, so that's up to number 10. Uh, I'm going to cut this video here and pick it up in another video. Hope you found this helpful. Good luck.